Here we go, here we go. All right, keyword ultra, keyword ultra. We're diving into this topic. Actually, a lot of people asked last week if I could cover my thoughts on ultra running and ultra marathon running, and I'm happy to do it, and that's why I love YouTube, and a shout out to all the new subscribers. There's a lot of you every single day, and so this is a daily, every single day, 5 a.m. Mountain Time, I publish a new video. I'm injured right now, so usually the videos don't start here in the studio, and that's what we call my shed that has been converted to my little uh, recording studio. Usually I start with filming out in the mountains, on the track, in the gym, etc., etc. but right now I am injured and just trying to heal up, be smart. So anyway, welcome to all the new subscribers. Let's dive into ultra running and ultra marathon running and oh my goodness okay first of all uh, I discovered ultra running about five years ago and yes I'm gonna give you the five tips that I wish five tips not ten five tips that I wish I would have known five years ago first of all I discovered ultra running through this crazy adventure called Nolan's 14 thanks to my brother go I don't have time to explain what that is now go check it out upper right hand corner for some crazy epic mountain running again upper right hand corner but before we dive into my five tips or five points about ultra running what I wish I would have known five years ago we got to define what is an ultra marathon it's basically it I shouldn't say basically it is any race that is longer than a marathon 26.2 miles or 42.1 kilometers Traditionally, ultra races usually start at the 50K distance, which is 31 miles. And you don't really talk about, I'm going to go run a 31 mile ultra race. They always define it as a 50K. And then the other distances that are more traditional in the ultra running scene are, so it's 50K, 50 mile, 100K, 100 miles. So it's kind of interesting. It alternates between Ks and miles. And I'm just going to say it right now. Uh, okay, no, first of all, this is a huge topic. And I'm probably going to make more vlogs about this topic in the future. But this is just a little precursor to give you a little taste. Because frankly, if you're in high school, if you're in college, if you're, in, you know, maybe you're 40 years old, this might be a 20 year project before you actually ever consider running an ultra marathon race it's it's a long-term proposition and i'm just planting the seed but i think as runners who are in this sport for the long haul it's really good to know about different disciplines and different opportunities out there within the entire global running space which includes ultra marathons but you 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 if you're in high school I personally wouldn't recommend jumping into ultra marathon running. I think you can save that for at least when you're 25 years old and above. I'll explain more about that in a second. Uh, so anyway, okay, in a prediction, bold prediction right now. Uh, what is it? May 25th, 2019. I predict, <laughs> I predict in the next 10, 15, no more than 20 years. So 2039, no, lot, no later than 2039 we will see an ultra marathon at the olympics i'm calling it the popularity of ultra running continues to pick up speed and momentum on a global scale scale the 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 fastest growing uh location for ultra marathon running right now is china kind of like road racing as well in china uh but it, it's it's china so i'm t i'm calling it now and it's gonna i'm also gonna predict it's gonna be the 100k distance so it's the so instead of 50k or instead of 100 mile it kind of blends the two so it's speed versus strength combined into the 100k so that's my bold prediction for 2019 not the question of the day but if you think uh, i'm crazy let me know down in the comments if you think i might be onto something let me know down in the comments okay moving on to my five points for what i wish i would have known five years ago before dabbling and jumping in to back. ultra running all right this is the time uh, to take out your notes take out your phone like start taking rest. notes Let's go. Point number one for what I wish I would have known about ultra running five years ago. Here we go. Use your speed while you have it. So this is a shout out to everybody. You might be fast in your late 30s, but especially the younger generations. We're talking folks in their 20s, high schoolers, and heck, if there's middle schoolers watching as well. And I, again, I'm not trying to be controversial, but I'm just trying to instill some of my experience 
with all of you. So when you get into ultra running and ultra racing, it's slower paces. It's just that you're running in a race, you're running usually like eight minute pace for a 50K, especially if you're at altitude over hilly terrain. Eight minute pace, nine minute pace, 10 minute pace. It's a very common pace for these races. And therefore you're your fast twitch muscle fibers in your legs are not being as recruited uh, because you're not racing half marathons, 10Ks, even the marathon on the roads, if you're really trying to race a, ha a fast marathon on the roads, you are using your leg speed way more than an ultra marathon race. So all I'm saying is, is use your speed while you still have it. And I wish, now that I know I can run a one, hour and 10 minute half marathon at altitude and now i'm fascinated to see how fast i can run a marathon at sea level and i know like these ultra races that i've done over the past two three four years i know they've created some good aerobic uh endurance in my in my breathing in my aerobic system but i just wish maybe i would have focused a little more on shorter races in my late 20s. That's all I'm saying. That's point number one. Tip number one is don't be afraid to capitalize now on your speed. All right. If you don't agree with me, let me know down in the comments. That is my experience thus far. Okay. And point number two for preparing for training for an ultra marathon race, strength over volume. Going out and running a 50K, you might think, okay, that means I need to be training, let's say, 10 to 15 percent more in volume uh, compared to my maybe my buildup for a marathon race i would say that is actually not necessary instead focus on leg strength so a lot of people message me on instagram asking for advice for preparing for a 50k or a 50 miler and based on again my training over the last three four five years i have found that strength, especially if you can get access to hill training, preferably big mountain hill training. I know that's not always possible where you might live, but that is more important than going out and hitting a 30 mile training run or a 35 mile training run. Um, when you're running an ultra race, your legs are gonna get tired. And that is when, again, what I have found, leg strength pays off more than, um, doing long, long, long aerobic runs. So just, so instead of running a 25 to 30 mile training run, drop it down to 18 to 24 miles, whatever you're comfortable with, and add three to 5,000 feet of vertical gain in that run in order to once again, build your leg strength. All right, that's point number two, strength over volume. Point number three for what I wish I would have known, five years ago for preparing for an ultra marathon race, gear really matters. Like your running gear really matters. When I started, honestly, I had a pair of running shorts, a pair of running shoes, and that was it. I had no other running gear. And you know how I like to keep my running gear simple. That's what I love about this sport is that it's simple. We don't need a bike. We don't need a pool. We don't need a tennis racket. We don't need hockey skates uh, or, or all the hockey gear. You just need a pair of running shoes. And that's how I train for years and years and years. But trust me when I say you need a little bit of extra gear for ultra running. Simple things like, hold on, simple things like a hat like sunglasses when you're out there training for more than two and a half or three hours you need protection from the sun you need a vest uh i, I had no clue that running vests even existed four or five years ago you need a vest to carry your hydration system to carry your food um and oh you might, you might need to invest in some running poles. Yes, for those big, big mountain days uh, in order to use your upper body strength in some of your training. You might need some tre running poles, trekking poles. You might need to buy a light. Why? Because a lot of ultra races happen at night. Sometimes you will run, especially for the 100K and 100 mile distance, you will run through the night or at least part in the night. So it's, in, it's crazy. A lot of this gear is listed down below from Amazon in case you have no idea what to start with or where to begin your purchasing of running gear. So anyway, that is point number three. Running gear really matters in ultra running. And point number four for what I wish I would have known five years ago, it's a race of attrition at times, at times, not all the time, but at times. What do I mean? Patience over speed. 
a lot of times, in it doesn't matter whether you're a front of the pack, middle of the pack, back of the pack runner, it doesn't really matter. Those that are patient and put more emphasis on nutrition and hydration oftentimes will do much, much, much better in an ultra race. It's completely different. Now listen, I haven't raced a marathon on the roads yet. Still trying to make that happen. Uh, but based on all the marathon races I've attended and cheered at or that I've watched on TV, the whole nutrition and, um, and hydration uh, setup is just completely, completely different. So uh, some famous ultra runners, I forget his name, but he says like ultra running is, it's a running contest but almost more importantly, it's an eating contest. Therefore, here's the point, you wanna dial in your nutrition practice early in your training block and your hydration practice. Why? Because when you're running for four hours, six hours, eight hours, all 24 hours, 24 hours plus, you have to be eating. Uh, not constantly, but you need to really, really be focused on your nutrition. Whereas in a fast marathon or half marathon, you know, you might get, uh, you might be racing for three hours or four hours or five hours, which of course you need to be, you need to be uh, cognizant of your nutrition and hydration in a marathon, a road marathon race, but it's just, um, it's amplified so, so much in an ultra marathon race. I cannot emphasize this enough and I'm I'm still learning and making mistakes and trying to dial in what really really works for me many of you remember my situation at run rabbit run 100 last September I tried to run a hundred mile race made it 50 miles dropped out I part of it was because I didn't take salt tablets I just I, I just didn't know I just didn't know and that was my fault for not doing enough research ahead of time so anyway dial in nutrition and hydration early, early, early in your training body. Okay, that's point number four, let's move on. Point number five for what I wish I would have known before diving into ultra running five years ago. It has nothing to do with actual running or hydration or nutrition or anything like that. It's actually, it's more an action item, a little homework for you. Ultrasignup.com, that's right. I wish somebody would have told me that Ultra Sign Up is the main online resource for finding ultra races, at least across the United States. I'm not quite as familiar with how much uh, international, how many international races are listed there, but that is your go-to resource for, and a lot of the elite athletes, their, their results are posted there on ultra sign up. So anyway, that's a good, good resource to know about ultrasignup.com. And I'll just make mention the most popular, or sorry, the most prestigious oldest race in the United States is Western States 100, which is in California and started in the late seventies, I do believe. And it's coming up in June, late June. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe even going out to it. We'll see. And then also uh, the, the, as far as on the international scene outside the United States, the most prestigious and biggest ultra marathon race is, a, is UT, it's called UTMB and it takes place in France, Italy, uh, and I think it dips into Switzerland ever so slightly. I could be wrong on that. Anyway, it starts and finishes in Chamonix in France. And so that takes place in August. Anyway, just wanted to mention that ultrasignup.com. It's really good. If you have no clue where to begin doing research, it's good to know about. Okay. Keyword again is ultra question of the day. Do you do ultra running, ultra racing? Oh, I'll be so curious. And if you do, let us know what your next race is down below. And then also second part, if you don't do ultra running, do you have any interest in the next five years, 10 years, 20 years to maybe consider ultra racing? Or maybe it's just like, you just have no interest. You just want to stick to 5k, 10k, half marathon, marathon, which is great as well. Great as well. All right. That's it for today. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Seek beauty, work hard and love each other. We're getting there folks. Foots moving along. It's not perfect yet, but it's moving along. See you tomorrow.